A, hi, in this video, I will show you how we can monitor AWS EKS cluster with using EFK stack, where EFK stands for Elasticsearch, FluentD, and Kibana. Yeah. So as you see in this screen, so this is a picture which represents my complete demo. Yeah. Where here I will be creating an EKS cluster in AWS account. Where in this EKS cluster I will be hosting my EFK stack. So this EFK stack which we use for monitoring the complete EKS workloads, okay? Where uh, it contains three components. As I said, it contains FluentD, Elasticsearch, and Kibana. Yeah. So let's say we have the EKS cluster hosted in AWS account. So in this EKS cluster, what we do is we first install Elasticsearch, and to that Elasticsearch we point a Kibana dashboard UI. And after that, we also install FluentD, which will retrieve the logs, metrics, and traces from the EKS cluster and pushes to Elasticsearch. Okay. So once the data has been pushed to Elasticsearch, the key from the Kibana UI or from the Kibana dashboard, we can represent or we can do an analytics kind of job or we can make the alertings and, and all, all the other respective monitoring jobs can be done from the Kibana tool. Okay, so this in the in the right in the left in the right side, as you see, this is a pictorial overview of the dashboard how the Kibana looks in. Yeah. So this is the just a brief about my uh, my demo. So now let's directly uh, jump to the um, the steps that we need to follow to start to do the, this complete setup and at the end how we can see the dashboard in the Kibana tool. Yeah. So now um, so this demo requires multiple prerequisites. First one. You should have your system installed with the EKCTL, where EKCTL is a um, EK, EKS that is a that is a um, AWS given command line tool which is meant for doing the task with respect to the EKS cluster. Yeah. So to again to install the EKS cluster or EKS uh, EKS command line tool, um, you need to have the um, uh, you need to have the, uh, the 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 prerequisite software that is the chocolatey uh, software which you can install with using this commandlet yeah and once the that prerequisite software has been installed we again you leverage that software to install the ekctl yeah so that's again right so this is what the prerequisites for uh, installing the ek ekctl command line tool and after that again as i said um, you need to have your eks cluster spinned up so to save the time for this demo, I have already pre-created the one EKS cluster with type of node of node types um, t2.large, okay, where the number of nodes equal to three, where I have given the threshold minimum equal to three and maximum threshold equal to five. Yeah, and the reason chosen is US East region, okay. So, so that's what this is the just a, a definition of my EKS cluster. Again, I'm leveraging the EKS. CTL that is EKS command line tool utility to create the EK, uh, to create the cluster and also do the multiple required jobs with respect to the uh, the EKS cluster yeah whereas for your reference I will upload this file to a repo to my GitHub repo and I will be sharing the link in at my videos description okay so with that note let's directly jump to the uh, the further uh, uh, further um, um, uh, further requirements of this um, uh, this particular demo so okay so not only this i do this video this demo also needs multiple other files as well so it contains um, an example um, uh, app yaml file uh, fluentd configuration um, yaml files okay so fluentd related configuration we have uh, two yaml files so this file also will be uploaded to the same uh, repo so and i also and also i will give the uh, the repo link okay from there you can refer and and do your task if you want to do from your laptop okay so now before i start with the command line utility and start uh, start working on the commands let me show you that the eks cluster is already been spent up in my aws account so this is my aws account where uh, the eks cluster is already spent up as you see here the status is active let me go further down and let's see the configurations so this this cluster contains yeah so these these are the its configurations it contains the uh, the networking yeah so the, it contains these many subnets and uh, and also it contains the security groups okay so when it when i came for the point of security groups uh, let me make a note that you need to 
um, make sure that the inbound and outbound uh, ports are being enabled as required okay or else you will end up with having issues at accessing the accessing the kibana ui yeah so that's also this is the, just a brief around um, before i start running my commands of this video so okay so till now we are just uh, um, exploring around uh, the prerequisites now let's directly start our demo so here uh, to to set up this complete uh, setup which i explained in this picture i will be completely using powershell commandlets okay i will be using windows powershell um, a command line tool from there i will be uh, uh, invoking my all um, commands okay to do to set up that particular workload so now um, before we start we as as you know that we need to set up the context of our aws account so here i'm using the aws cli utility so let me set up the context of my aws account with using this command that is aws configure yeah so aws configure is again yeah it's a, it's a aws cli uh, uh, command which through which you will be setting you will be, through which you will be giving the uh, access id uh, access secret then you are setting the location and the output format okay so with this uh, uh, the access key and access id you will be set, you will be uh, making your um, uh, the context okay you will be setting your context to aws account okay and from there the rest commands will leverage the same uh, profile and, and it will try to do the next jobs okay so as of now i have given my um, access key id access keys pre uh, i mean in, in the previous uh, uh, runtime as well so that's the reason i have not given the if i if somebody is not giving the input here it will take the default values okay so that's the reason it has taken the original values as well so that's it i have set the context now so now um, let me show you that my uh, my cluster is is responding with using the eks ctl command line utility so here what i'm doing is i'm just getting the cluster uh, where the name is uh, something like this and the reason is usd is reason okay so as you see here it has given the response in the sense eks cluster is up and running yeah so that's the reason so since we have i have explained that eks ctl uh, command line utility as a prerequisites i have installed in my system that's the reason i was able to use this eks ctl tool okay so now let's go to the next one um, so next command is to get the parts whereas since i have not created any workloads in the eks cluster that's the reason i won't run this but whereas if you run it same from your end, you will not get any kind of parts there okay as this at this stage yeah so now let's go to the next command um, so next command is to create as you see here so for your purpose and make the uh, the demo very uh, in a uh, structured manner i have uh, documented all the commandlets which needs to be run one after the other in a, in a sequential order so that's the reason you see that the commands are being noted as one two three up to ten yeah and you need to run these commands in in this same sequential format if you are trying from your side okay so first of all what i'm doing is i'm next i'm using the kubectl utility okay again so this will again add a added as a, a one more prerequisite where you should have your system installed with the kubectl yeah? so now i'm using the uh, kubectl utility to create a namespace so what does this namespace in the sense it will create a, a kind of container in the eks cluster in which you can spin up the uh, the kubernetes part okay so now uh, we have created the namespace with the name called dapr monitoring okay so that is dapr hyphen monitoring is the my namespace now yeah so now next command so next command is to add the repo of elastic search okay since our aks cluster is running fine and we set to the, we, we currently uh, we currently created an example and an an example namespace now in this namespace we need to um, uh, create the parts okay so when i say parts in the sense we need to create a part of an elastic search part of the fluent dv and also finally we need to create a part of uh, uh, the the kibana tool as well okay so in the sense we are generally configuring three parts okay so to and all these parts will be sitting in in one of the namespaces okay which i will tell you uh, sequentially okay so that's the reason what we need to do is again here there is a one more prerequisite here okay so in total we have four prerequisites okay so this is the fourth one that is the helm utility yeah so helm is again a, a kind of um, a uh, utility which will help you to manage the eks configurations management okay so this helm tool will minimize the your uh, very complex task to uh, maintain the configuration at eks in a very simpler simpler manner okay so that's the reason um, so this utility is heavily used for uh, any kind of eks or any kind of kubernetes jobs okay 
so now what i do is i'm just setting the um, the helm repo to my local by using this command so that's it since i have already run this command helm uh, repo add elastic and then i'm giving the link of my uh, link of the helm elastic.co uh, since i have already run it's saying that it's already exist okay so that is accepted if you are trying for the first time you will get the some other different um, outputs okay similarly what i am doing is i am updating my repo that is the um, uh, the helm repo locally by running this command okay so helm repo update will update your local helm repo okay so helm repo again as i said so this is a, a kind of um, uh, a kind of uh, a tool or utility which will have the um, a bunch of um, uh, yaml files or a bunch of um, um, uh, the Kubernetes specification files, uh, which will help you to do the required configuration at Kubernetes. Okay, that's a in layman's term that how you can understand what is the Helm. Yeah, and again, um, so if you want to know that how you can set up the Helm configuration in the Windows, please do watch my previous videos where I have explained everything from the scratch in regards to this. Yeah. So now uh, it's currently running. It's it's currently uh, refreshing the repo of Helm in my system. Once this is done, we'll go to the next commands. Okay. So it's in, in, in general, it is taking some time. So here you go, right? So update is complete. Uh, happy helming. Yeah. So that's what the message says. Now with that, now let's go to the next command. So next command is to install elastic search using helm. Okay. So this is where the original, uh, the command we are running now. We are again, right? So to configure the, uh, the, all the, um, uh, required steps, for example, elastic search configuration or uh, configuring the Kibana. I'm using the helm utility here. Yeah. Yeah. So now let's run the next command. So next command is helm install elastic search. So this is the elastic search, elastic search forward slash elastic search. Then the name of my namespace, which we created here, then the, then the set hyphen hyphen set replica equal to one. Okay. So let me tell the implications of this one. Okay. So elastic search is a, is a kind of big, uh, uh, kind of big installation, which will consume the lots of resources in the EKS cluster. That's the reason I'm setting the replica set equal to one so that I can save some spaces and it, it will not impact the other parts in the uh, EKS cluster. Okay. So that's the reason I have maintained or I have configured the elastic search part replica equal to one. Yeah. So now let me run this command. So what it does is it will create a pod in the uh, uh, DAPR monitoring namespace now. Okay. Yeah. So it will take some time uh, and it will eventually configure the required pods in the uh, in the EKS cluster, which we have created. Okay. So once this is done, let me go to the next commands. Okay. So while that is running, so next command is to once the we install the elastic search, we are installing the Kibana again using the Helm utility. So let's wait for this command to get complete. What it does is it, it, it will, it will, it will refer the Helm repositories, uh, with these naming conventions. Yeah. With these uh, elastic search naming convention. And at the end it will, it will do the, it will fetch the, uh, the specification files from the, uh, Helm utility and it will run the, uh, the command. Okay. Against our EK, EKS cluster. Yeah. And finally, what it does is it will set the required, uh, uh, the uh, required applications and the required the deployments. Yeah. So all those configurations will be done automatically by using the help uh, utility. Yeah. So it's taking some time though. So as you see here, so it has successfully completed now, right? So this is the output. It says that elastic search, uh, uh, where the namespace is this one and the status equal to deployed. Okay. So that's what, so now it has successfully deployed that elastic search for in my EKS cluster. Okay. Now, as I said, let's go and run um, the next command. Okay. So next command is where I'm, I'm configuring the, um, uh, the Kibana. Yeah. So let me copy correctly. So this is the same method you can follow. Okay. Again, uh, the, the command syntax is helm space install. Then which is the utility I'm installing, right? That is the Kibana UI. Yeah? And where the repository name is elastic for slash Kibana and the, the, the name of the, um, the name of namespaces, uh, DAPR hyphen monitoring. Yeah. So till now what we did is we installed two parts in our AKS cluster. Okay. Let's check what are the parts are been running now. Yeah. Till now kubectl, um, get parts 
hyphen n nothing but namespace and what is the namespace that is dap hyphen r dap r hyphen monitoring yeah so what it does is it will show the status of the parts okay as you see here right elastic search master one that's a one part which is running um so it's 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 status is running and the it's it's ready yeah but whereas the kibana uh, is, is still under process okay so let me keep on running this state run let me keep on run this command so that so you see there is a difference right so here it was not at ready at this time now it is ready okay so that's a good sign that we are on the good track now yeah so once we are done with the kibana installation let's go to the next command so next command is obviously we are configuring the fluentd okay so fluentd again so as i explained fluentd is an uh, kind of uh, uh, utility which we install in the in the kubernetes cluster to gather the required uh, logs matrix state and 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 and, and etc okay uh, from your um, kubernetes workload and modify it and then ship it to the uh, to your elastic search cluster okay once it is dumped once the those data is dumped into the elastic search uh, uh, cluster then from there you can leverage the kibana ui and from there you can do the dashboarding stuffs or alerting stuffs okay so now um, let's go to the next command so next command is to um, we are now not using the helm but we are using the kubectl okay so now let me run these commands so now uh, before i run this command let me give some hints or briefs about this one so we are using the cube ctl here and leveraging the apply nothing but i am applying some configuration on the cube in the kubernetes where the uh, i'm what i'm doing is i'm setting the the, the required fluentd configuration map files okay so now let me before i run this command let me open that yaml file so let me open this yaml file now so before i run this command i just wanted to walk you through this here the kind is configuration map okay nothing but we are doing some configuration mapping here the name is fluentd config and the where the namespace here right you need to see here the namespace is, is now changing to cube system which is a, a default namespace which gets created once we spin up the eks cluster yeah and these are the configurations okay anyways this file will be shared into my repo and repo link will be given at the videos description okay so now let's run this command and so that the the required configuration will be done by the kubectl command okay so, uh, so here here right so there is an error it says that the path is not matching okay so this is a good error and i will show why it is throwing the error is because the file right it's trying to find the fluentd hyphen uh, config hyphen map dot yaml file is not under is not there under um, this path okay that's what it means we need to change the cd okay we need to do the change directory to this path so i will do cd to that path now let me run the command it should run okay because uh, with this uh, uh, dot forward slash um, identification it will try to find this file within the context okay so since i have previously run the fluentd configuration that's the reason it says uh, unchanged whereas when you run it for the first time what it does is it will create the required uh, parts okay required parts and all yeah so that's uh, that's the one thing about the fluentd configuration map so now we need to run one more uh, command to make uh, the uh, fluentd configuration complete okay in the eks cluster so this is the command which will do the next job okay where fluentd uh, dap are with r back so let me open this file as well before end the command again as you see here it is it does multiple jobs here okay one is it creates a service account it creates a cluster roles right and finally it will install the um, it will um, install the cluster roles yeah let me minimize uh, then it is creates a cluster role then then the daemon set okay so this is the stage where you will be configuring the daemon set of fluentd okay so let's run this command to complete that job as well whereas again for your information i will be sharing this file in the, in the same repo as well okay so no need to worry you can take the same files from the from my repo yeah since i have run this command previously uh, while i was testing so that's the reason it is telling the output something like this yeah whereas when you run for the first time what it does is it will create the those required configurations okay nothing but it will create these many services um, uh, these many configurations 
at uh, at 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 kubernetes okay or at at uh, eks cluster yeah so with that note we have completed the uh, uh, the uh, configuration of fluentd as well now let's let's go and see the um, the parts okay the next command is it just to validate if the um, um, sorry so the command let was uh, typed the wrong command so let me and drag it down let it be like this so what we are doing is since we have created the fluentd configuration in the eks cluster now we are validating whether the parts of the fluentd got spinned up okay or are or, or in, in which state they are so to know that kubectl get parts the namespace here you see right there's a difference here so here we are pointing to cube hyphen system yeah so now let me run that i'm providing a hyphen w which is nothing but it will just keep the session live yeah keep the command run in live state okay so let me run it we should see um, three parts running belongs to uh, the fluentd yeah so here you go you see that there are three fluentd parts are been running at namespace cube system okay so that's what we want uh, which is a good sign and these are in running state and the uh, ready as well okay so now let me uh, go come out of this by using control c okay I, I typed control c that's the reason i came out of that loop now what we did is we configured the all the required uh, the parts okay one is elastic search we also installed kibana ui then we also installed the uh, fluentd to gather the logs from the eks cluster yeah so then finally what we do is we need to run the next command that is to install the dap pair with the enabling the json formatted lag okay so this is again a one kind of one type of configuration which will gather the the output being generated from the uh, eks cluster or from the uh, from the eks jobs or eps eks kind of tasks so that logs will be uh, formatted in the form of json okay so for that one again i need to run some utilities okay so that's the reason these are the next commands are targeted to configure that uh, configurations okay so again i'm leveraging the uh, the helm again so the here the dap uh, helm repo is already exist that's the reason it says that it's already exist so the command is helm repo add dapr and this is the https url of that github repo yeah so similarly let me run the sequential commands as well that is um, uh, updating the uh, repo again I have already done so no need to run but 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 since we are following some sequence so that's the reason let me run it so what it does is again it will refresh the local repo and it will take the same time as it took while i ran the same command just above yeah so after that what we are doing is um yeah so after that what we are doing is we are um, running the next commands to create the uh, namespace okay so here uh, this configuration needs a separate namespace in the EKS cluster that is DAPI system. Okay, so that's what the next command will create. And similarly, uh, we are also uh, uh, installing the, uh, or we are also doing the, the, the next configuration with, which is of type DAPR. Okay. So let's see if that got completed. Here you go. The Helm update is completed. Let me run the next commands now. So next command is to set the, uh, create a namespace which will be used by the helm command okay here i'm creating a, a namespace right the namespace is created now let's go to the next command so next command will uh, will will do uh, will spin up a, a new part okay once this command is get successfully created let me show you that uh, part as well It's taking some time so before while it is running let me uh, take you to the other commands as well so once that is done what we do is we install one example application in our eks cluster so that that will cause some logs to be generated in the eks cluster and that log will be presented in the in our um, elastic search and and eventually in the kibana ui okay so that's what the target is so that's the reason next command is targeted for so currently it is still running yeah so once okay again once the uh, once the example application is installed in the eks cluster what we do is we do um, next one next uh, next task is targeted to search the logs okay 
to search the dialogs we need to have the ui that is kibana ui how do we how do we access the kibana ui okay say so now that's what the the command this command is targeted for so how do we access is with using the port forward methodology okay so what we do is uh, we we forward the port from the eks cluster to the my local host okay so in general in layman's term if you want to understand what is port forwarding is nothing but you are making your application emulated from your system okay nothing but you are you are making that application available within your local system and from there you are accessing your application okay that's what the port forwarding is does all about okay and again as you see here the port forwarding will be done on the on this port okay that is um 5060 5601 yeah here you go right so it has it has successfully configured the the dap um, dapr uh, configuration with using the helm okay now let's go to the next command as i said next command is to configure an example application in the in the eks cluster okay let me uh, drag down next so again this counter.yaml file so it is also there in the same path so here it is um let me find that file file okay so here it is so this is the file let me see if that has thrown the error because yes the, because the file name is different okay so let me make the file name something like this so the file name should be something like this okay or else so this is a good example okay let's say if you are trying to uh, run kubectl apply hyphen f with something name something different name than the actually actual names present under that path then you will get that kind of error okay so now let me run my example application with using the right name of yaml file here you go right so the pod is already existed that's the reason it says unchanged okay uh, now we have successfully created an example um, application okay so let me tell you what is the application this is this is just one example part what it does is it will keep on counting okay it will just keep on counting some it just does a, a, a busy busy box okay it's a image of type busy box and it will just run this command yeah so that's what this example application will do in the pod yeah so now finally uh, we have come to the next stage that is to access the our kibana ui okay so now i am accessing the kibana ui using this port forwarding method okay so as we exp as i explained so the port will be forwarded on port number 5601 yeah so once it it successfully forwards the port it will tell you right it says that forward forwarding the port from this ip range to the current um the current local system okay nothing but my system yeah so from my system i need to access the kibana ui by uh, by browsing this uri okay so nothing but uh, so again the URI is, is very simple right it, it's a um, uh, it's a local host colon 5601 yeah that is nothing but the port on which we have forwarded okay so here you go okay so that's it okay this is what we wanted yeah so we have successfully configure our EKS cluster so that it can right so that we can access the um, the kibana ui okay from here you can do all your log analytics monitoring yeah and also any kind of dashboarding visualization okay so you can do any kind of jobs from this one okay so here once we are in the um, in the elastic portal um, elastic portal okay here you see that enterprise searches option is there you have the observability option you have the security option and here is the where your kibana ui is okay so this is my kibana ui now let me let me visualize uh, like an example logs okay that we have started for that one let me go to the uh, uh, stack management then i need to go to the index management and here you go right so we have the log yeah so we have the log called uh, dap pr so that's what the logs has been already been published okay so now let me visualize it next let me go to the index pattern create index pattern um, then 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 let me type uh, dap pr star All right so this is we want uh, next let me uh, use time span timestamp and then create the pattern okay what we are doing is we are with using some certain pattern we are extracting the logs been pushed to from the 
from this EKS cluster from this uh, from the EKS cluster to this Kibana dashboard. Okay, so as you see here, there is the data has been pumped in. Okay, so you see right there are multiple pages of data has been already been pumped in here. Okay. So now, so this is what right. So we have successfully now uh, index management. Let me do the index management. Right. So again, uh, where is index patterns? Right. So we have the DA, DA pair pattern and then then this is where we come in okay from here again um, in, in the analytics if i go to the discover right we should see some logs okay that's what i mean because we have created the index that's the reason we are using the same index and at the end here you go right so so that's it yeah so so this is where right so this is where all our data is getting pumped here okay so you can imagine okay so we have the eks cluster here where the workloads are been running our example application right our ex example application was just to count one to four, some numbers yeah and that is generating huge load of data and that data has been captured from our efk stack that is elastic search fluentd kibana okay and in kibana we see that log has been pumped in here okay and from here we can do all kinds of visualization something like this doing the log analytics creating the monitoring reporting yeah so all the kind of monitoring um, uh, jobs can be handled by using this ui okay yeah so that's it i have successfully shown you the required things to be shown in this demo from scratch to end okay yeah and yeah finally thanks a lot for watching my videos um kind request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot okay with that note thank you thanks a lot